yeah, yeah. Monday, welcome back to the channel. You know we're doing a rookie dynasty mock draft every single Monday. We are doing it. We might up the volume. I don't really know, but for right now, you know what we're getting into. Free agency's off and running. It's going to get wild quickly. We've already made the biggest splash in Atlanta. We grabbed Jonu Smith for a seventh rounder, reuniting Jonu Smith with Arthur Smith. Jonu Smith, we needed a tight end one in Atlanta, and now we got it. And then we extended Chris Lindstrom, the highest single graded PFF player in all of the NFL last year, 105 light million dollars. We're off to a roaring start. Really excited for us trading for Lamar Jackson. Exciting start, going to be a more exciting finish. I think what I'm going to do, listen, we're doing a lot of rookie dynasty stuff. I do want to cover the NFL a little bit. We will get back into real professional football players eventually. I think on Friday, depending on what happens over the next few days, I will make one long complete video recap of everything that happens this week but i'm probably not going to be doing like breaking news segments throughout the week every time someone signs every time there's a report of someone signing because that shit just starts to break my heart every time i think that we have a new quarterback in atlanta and we never fucking do so we're going to do a mock draft today and this mock draft is going to be based off of a four round nfl mock draft that cody carp over at Player Profiler did. Now, Cody Carp may have a little bit of a bias towards fantasy football, and that's okay because we like bias towards fantasy football. We're fantasy football people. We want the action. We want the juice. But he's also, he covers the NFL. He covers every position. He covers defense. He covers offense. He's he's at the combine. He's in the he's at these places in real life and getting actual sources and data and information from real NFL execs. Um, he covers all NFL, not just fantasy football. So this is, you know, I, I think this is just about as accurate as most mock drafts you're going to find out there uh, most of them only do a round or two rounds he went four rounds deep so we have four rounds of information to work off of for a for a rookie mock and to expedite this process because if we're sitting here and i'm going 36 picks deep uh i've already basically done the mock draft okay how this is how it's gonna work this is how it's gonna work i'm gonna tuck my shirt in and flex the traps real quick and then we'll be bike <laughs> Okay, so the link for the mock draft that we are doing our rookie mock draft based off of will be linked down below. It's on Player Profiler's website. You can go through the four rounds. What I do with these is I have Sexual Patterson put it onto an Excel sheet, which I'll show up on the screen eventually, and I use that to filter out only skill players and only offensive players. So we're going to move over to the big screen. We'll put me in the bottom left. And I've already done the mock draft on Sleeper. This is the mock draft that Cody Carp did on Player Profiler. Uh, again, link is down below. So if you want to follow along or if you want to do your own mock draft based off of this, the only thing I will say, uh, he had the Raiders trading up to go get CJ Stroud. Obviously, we know the Pan he made this right before the Panthers traded up to take the number one pick. So we're going to swap the Raiders with the Panthers and have the Panthers down here where the, uh, or the Raiders down here where the Panthers are and just make the uh, complete swap there as if that's what happened. So we're going to work bases off that. And I've already put the players in on my picks on sleeper so that we don't take forever to do this. And we're basically just going to go through, you know, the first round, the second round, the third round, talk a bit about, you know, the, the, the pockets and the tiers of players and rankings and anyone I think you should take notice of. But here on the right, you could see in the Excel sheet, I know this is a very noisy window right now we have me we have the rookie mock draft and then we have this excel sheet is just the data from cody's mock but i filtered out any defensive players so you could just see you know round one up here pick one cj stroud to the panthers this is what he has in his website but it helps us it helps me be able to actually like do the mock draft correctly because i see you know the different players the different positions going in the different rounds therefore it's easier for me to make fantasy picks okay so now you guys probably have a clearer picture of you know where everybody's going what round they're picked in so that as i'm going through it you know it's easier for you to follow along uh based on this board we had Bijan robinson go off round one pick 26 to the dallas cowboys so i took him at the 101 I think anywhere that he goes in the first round, he pretty much is the 101 for me. I'm not taking a quarterback over him. I don't care that it is a super flex mock draft. I uh, He's just too valuable and he's too elite of a player. And I don't think any of these guys are good enough immediately to make an impact on your team to the point where B. John Robinson's four or five years on his rookie contract are, are going to be jumped. Okay, so Bijan, the easy 101 for me. Then we have this string of quarterbacks here. Um, you know, CJ Stroud was traded up to the number one pick to get drafted by. He's the favorite on FanDuel DraftKings. So there's a lot of noise about him probably being the number one. I think there is some credence to the fact that they made that trade 
immediately after the NFL Combine where they saw C.J. Stroud throw and they did not see Bryce Young do anything. So may, I don't know. Maybe they were just like, oh, Bryce Young's over 200 pounds. Now we feel comfortable. Uh, but they saw C.J. Stroud throw and by every account, he was wildly accurate. So it feels like, you know, you see a guy throw the ball really accurate and you're like, that's that's the face of the franchise I want. Like, I just want a really accurate quarterback for the next five, 10 years throwing my pass catchers the ball. So CJ Stroud, if he's the number one pick to the Panthers, obviously their weapons are a little bit sus after getting rid of DJ Moore. And now they have uh, a loss of picks and et cetera. But I just want an accurate quarterback. And I like CJ Stroud here. I like Bryce Young as well. He goes to Houston with the second pick and uh, he will be my 103 in this mock draft. And you have Anthony Richardson. You know, I've I've talked ad nauseum. So has everybody else. And this will be the same conversation we have for the next two months leading up to the draft. Uh, Anthony Richardson goes fifth overall to the Raiders in this mock draft, so he will be my 104 in Superflex drafts. Again, I talked in depth about um, my thoughts on Anthony Richardson in, I want to say it was Friday's video, and a lot of you guys, I think, liked what I had to say about that. We got a lot of comments about it. So if you want more in depth on like the way I feel about Anthony Richardson, I just feel like he's still uh, he's still too raw for me to really want to buy into him as like a high upside fantasy player. Obviously, he's a high upside fantasy player, but I'm still leaning to the side of like, okay, but the percentage chances of him not reaching that level are still very high in my mind. I think there's still a lot of work for him to do, a lot of work for Will Levis to do, but he's the fourth overall pick going to the Colts, so he will be my 105, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that the rest of the skill players either went to weird landing spots or didn't get you know necessary big-time draft capital, so had someone like Jackson Smith and Jigba went 12th overall to the Texans with their second first-round pick, I would have thought differently, but because this is the way that things are set up, you could see the draft picks here. Addison went 17th overall to the Steelers. Quentin Johnson went one pick after him to the Lions. A Flowers, 21st overall to the Chargers. JSN to the Ravens, 22nd overall. It, it's kind of like a weird mixture of capital and landing spots. So I took Jordan Addison, although he kind of fell off my board a little bit following the combine. If this is the way that the NFL draft plays out, I'm cool with Addison as my 106. He's still a guy that I really, really like. And who are we to question the Pittsburgh Steelers as they're drafting wide receivers? Claypool's obviously out of the picture. I think Deontay Johnson will be out of the picture sooner rather than later. Um, Addison just feels like, you know, he's in that Deontay Johnson mold. He's in that Antonio Brown mold. He's in that quick twitch get off the line of scrimmage, great separation skill type wide receiver that we've seen flourish in Pittsburgh. Um, so it'd be a little bit surprising if they went here, but I like the landing spot for Addison. So I go with him there with the seventh pick. We do take JSN. He is my wide receiver one right now in fantasy terms. He lands in Baltimore. Not a great spot, obviously, but I don't really want to overthink this. I think that he's just such a good player that um, situations change in the NFL very, very, very quickly. So I don't want to like overemphasize who's throwing him the ball or the situation that he is necessarily in to the point that it makes that much of a difference to the player talent level. So we have JSN at seven, and we have these wide receivers uh, following up quickly afterwards. I wouldn't say Flowers over Quentin Johnson, only because like the Quentin Johnson landing spot is a little bit weird, right? He goes to the Lions. Now, obviously, they've retooled their entire offense. They have Jamison Williams coming back from his injury. They have Amon Ross and Brown, who's an absolute stud. So I don't really know where Johnson fits into the mold of this offense, given that they already have like two great pass catchers. Like this, this, this would make their wide receiver core probably the most exciting young wide receiver core in the NFL. As uh, What does that translate into when it comes to fantasy? I don't know, which is why he's a fourth wide receiver in this tier for me. But Zay Flowers going to L.A. is uh, kind of a beautiful thing. I mean, Keenan Allen is probably still going to play there. So as a slot guy, I guess it's a little bit weird of a fit. But again, not really going to overthink it when you have Zay Flowers connected to Justin Herbert for the next four or five years. And if you like Zay Flowers as a player, which I do, I think this will be a beautiful thing. Even if he gets off to kind of like a slow start, he'll learn from Keenan Allen. And, you know, if Keenan Allen is not gone this year, he might be gone next year or the year after, whatever it is. A Flowers kind of just like steps into that role immediately tied to Justin Herbert. Now we get into round two. All the round one guys are now off the board. So we will hide them. And this is what's left in the draft. So in round two, we had five wide receivers, two running backs, and four tight ends. So we had no first round tight ends, but we had four second round tight ends. And then Hendon Hooker is the only QB in the second round. So Jameer Gibbs lands down here at pick 53 to the Bears. I don't love the spot. It pretty much screams that like Gibbs is going to have the role that he had in college. And that's like third down pass catching playmaking role. Goes to a now up and coming really exciting offense with Justin Fields who now got you know, DJ Moore, 
which makes the entire offense so much better because what it does, it doesn't just add DJ Moore to the offense, but now it allows Chase Claypool and Darnell Mooney to take a lot off their plate. Like we're not depending on those dudes to be the one and two. Now you have Chase Claypool instead of like maybe being the one there, pushing down to the two, three role where he doesn't have as much going on on his plate, which just improves the offense exponentially. So you add a guy like Gibbs and he will likely be in a committee with Khalil Herbert. Maybe they re-sign David Montgomery. It doesn't look likely at this point, but Herbert and Gibbs would be a nice little running back tandem. What that means for Gibbs as a fantasy player, uh, the upside's not great, but I mean, that comes with now the capital of grabbing him at the 110. I know a lot of people liked him at like the 105, whatever. He's still under 200 pounds, which makes me a little bit nervous here. Really fast, really explosive, really fun player. And how much do we like fun players on our fantasy team? Ah, they could be good. They could be all right. But I'd rather take the first round wide receivers than Gibbs down here at pick 53 going to the Bears. We have Jalen Hyatt going to the Texans. So you pair up Bryce Young with Jalen Hyatt. They just grabbed Robert Woods. So you're putting together a nice little receiving core together. And, uh, I like when rookies, uh, wide receivers, and quarterbacks kind of come in together. There's so you got the 111, Jalen Hyatt, who went second round, 33rd overall, so the first pick, uh, second pick of the second round. Josh Down goes immediately after him to the Indianapolis Colts, pick 35 overall. Josh Downs is the dude that I love from UNC, slot wide receiver, but he plays, you know, he plays like Steve Smith, where he's got the size, but he's got that fucking dog in him, and he gets paired up with Will Levis for the future of the Indianapolis Colts, who desperately need playmakers on offense. They got Michael Pittman, but everyone else kind of stinks on that, uh, on the pass-catching side of things. For the Indianapolis Colts, uh, so we move into the second round, and this is when I start looking at the tight ends because I don't love any of the wide receivers left. Um, we have three wide receivers and Zach Charbonnet at running back. Zach Charbonnet goes to the Giants. They tag Saquon Barkley. If they grab Charbonnet in the second round, it probably is telling you that They'll move off Saquon after this year, um, which makes it exciting, but also, you know, makes his first year kind of irrelevant. And he is a four year college player, so he's a little bit older than other dudes. So you're kind of, um, you know, it's, it's a fine line there. It's, you know, a year, two years, whatever. But, you know, the running back prime in the NFL is short. So, you know, if you take away a year, two years, that's that's kind of a big deal on your rookie contract from a running back, which is why I kind of push him down the board a little bit here. I don't love uh, Rashi Rice, Keishon Booty. Big loser at the combine. I do like Cedric Tillman a lot, but he also goes to a really, really crowded wide receiver, just pass catching group in Jacksonville with Christian Kirk, who had a breakout year. Calvin Ridley coming back. If you guys did not watch the Calvin Ridley, or if you did not read the Calvin Ridley Players Tribune article that he released last week, it was fucking awesome. Calvin Ridley wrote a blog post on the Players Tribune, free to read, um, just talking about what he's gone through the last like two, three years, everything with the gambling what was going through his head emotionally. Epic read. We will link that down below for you. Um, but maybe I'm a sucker, but it makes me feel like he's fucking back and he's going to have a big, big year with the Jaguars, which would immediately put Cedric Tillman down, probably the fifth weapon on this offense because you have Kirk, you have Ridley, you have Evan Ingram, you have um, who resigned, and you have Travis Etienne. You know, so it's obviously going to be a high-powered explosive offense, but Tillman falls really far back. All this to say, because the wide receivers here are not as appetizing, we will move on to the tight ends for the time being. So I took Dal Dalton Kincaid at the 2-1, who obviously hasn't gotten a lot of noise because he didn't contribute at the NFL Combine because he's re recovering from a back injury. He went to the Patriots. He's my favorite tight end in this class. His pass catching ability is uh, second to none. I don't love the landing spot. I feel like New England has had trouble figuring out what the fuck they want to do with the tight ends since uh, Gronk left. But with Jonu Smith now in Atlanta, Hunter Henry, I don't really know what's going on there. I don't know. Feels like they uh, have a plan for Dalton Kincaid if they want to take him here in the second round. Michael Mayer, uh, I took right after him at the 2-2. He goes 45th overall to the Packers. Interesting landing spot. I'd be surprised if the Packers don't walk away from this draft within the first two, three rounds with a a tight end wouldn't be surprised if they took one in the first round to be completely honest with you Rodgers is not going to be a Packer I think that's pretty much I think it's either the Jets or him being retired by the time you watch this we might actually already have the decision from him let me check Twitter whoa Chargers running back Austin Eckler is requesting permission to speak with other teams about a potential trade after pre preliminary talks with the team aimed at a contract extension did not progress wow that would be electric it was Pat McAfee who Aaron Rodgers had break the news of his contract extension this time last year. McAfee opens the show today saying this on Rodgers. I have no answers for you. I got no idea what the hell is going on. The Bears are closing in on offensive tackle Mike McGlinchey. That'd be an interesting signing. I think he's definitely on the on, on the come down on his career, but still anything added to that fucking Chicago line is a big upgrade. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is why I need the Falcons to get Lamar because then we can have all these vets that want to come play with us. 
We can have the wide receivers. We can have these veteran running backs who want to sign with us. These old line guys who are on their last two years or whatever. You know, they got nothing left in the tank. They say, hey, I'll give you what I have left in the tank. We'll transfer the oil from my vehicle to yours and we'll push us together. I can ride shotgun while you're fucking whipping it. While you put the top down. We don't say the car's topless. We say the titties is out. So Lamar Jackson gets titties out of shirts. We need it. Um, speaking of titties, we took Kayshawn Booty at the 203 here. Kayshawn Booty goes second round 40th overall to the saints i don't know something about that that landing spot just really i really just love it with Derek carr coming in i know booty had an absolutely terrible nfl combine guy can't get off the fucking ground i still think he's a good player i still think he just needs to get his mind right and get his shit together and he could be a very very good nfl player and i, I low-key really like the landing spot here in new orleans so i took him at 203 took hendon hooker here at the 2-4 this is a super flex league he goes second round 37th pick so you're talking about the sixth pick into the second round he goes to seattle so obviously he's going to be behind geno smith geno smith just signed the contract extension yeah so they they could get out of it after year one if they wanted to so if they if they got hendon hooker and they felt like he was ready to take over the team after this year this is a wait and see kind of thing but i think hendon hooker can be i think he'll be one of the steals in the draft obviously because he's coming back from the uh major lower leg injury lower body injury um so he won't be ready immediately but like this is the guy that you want to sit behind. And Geno Smith is like the perfect spot for it. Wouldn't be surprised if like Detroit target Hendon Hooker, let him sit behind him. But this is like one of the perfect spots. And this is you don't want Hooker going to a spot where like they're gonna rush him back and want him back ready to go and they don't have any other quarterback competition. You want him to sit behind a veteran and learn a little bit. And then if he goes to the Seattle Seahawks, you know, like by the time he's playing they're going to have a good offense. They'll have DK Metcalf for him. They'll have a good run game with Kenneth Walker. So I think this is a kind of like best case scenario for a dude like Hendon Hooker and would make me really, really intrigued by that landing spot. So I took him at the 2-4. Darnell Washington, the beast. Uh, Miami, Mike Kosicki is probably going to be out of Miami within the next week or so. So that opens up the tight end spot pretty significantly. Darnell Washington's a fucking animal. He can block. He can pass, catch. He can be one of the premier red zone weapons for them. You know, they have Tyree Kill. They have Waddle. But they don't really have like a big body target that – uh, can be that presence for Tua or whoever the quarterback ends up being there, Lamar Jackson possibly. So him being picked in the second round, 51st overall to Miami, is a really intriguing landing spot. So I took him at the 2-5, and we talked about Zach Charbonnet. You're kind of just like wait and see mode for a year. 2-6, if you can wait a year for your starting running back, there you go. You got him. And the next pick was the first time I dipped into round three. We still have dudes left in round two, but I decided to go to Tajay Spears. And I'm not as high on Tajay Spears as everybody else in the industry is. He's like one of those dudes that you're not allowed to speak ill about. You're not an, you're not allowed to not love him. Otherwise, it's sacrilege. Don't love him, but I do love this landing spot in Miami because they don't really have anything at the running back position, and he can compete for the starting role immediately. And he kind of fits that 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 archetype of like what Mike McDaniel had in San Francisco. Like he's the perfect kind of fit for that role uh, you know they tried to do it with Chase Edmonds last year Tajay Spears is kind of like uh, a Chase Edmonds to be honest with you. he's got that same play style he's quick he's small he's shifty he can catch passes all that kind of stuff uh, so that that pick would actually make sense and again he can compete for a big time playing role immediately in an offense that you want pieces in to shout at the 2-8 I took Cedric Tillman who went off the board 56 overall to the Jaguars like I said I just want to pick good players and good offenses obviously it's going to be a tough uh, spot for him to like really compete for a big role but took him at 2-8 at the 2-9 I took Tyler Scott so I dipped into the third round again while we still had second round players available to take I love Tyler Scott dude he went uh, third round, 70th overall to the Las Vegas Raiders. I just got done doing the write-up for Tyler Scott in our draft guide. And this dude absolutely checks like every box I'm looking for. I love Tyler Scott. And I'm actually, I'm going to do a video. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. I want to do a video on like five underrated wide receivers in this class that are like second, third, fourth round rookie wide receivers that that I absolutely love and some of them are listed here like Michael Wilson at 212 a lot of you guys probably don't know much about him he's one of my favorite like later round picks at wide receiver so I won't go too into detail but Tyler Scott Cincinnati player early declare absolute field stretcher got the dog in him um I want to do an all dog team fucking videos well I got so many videos I want to make god damn it so many videos so little time but if I did have time Tyler Scott would be on that list Rasheed Rice went 210 in the NFL draft, he went 
second round, 44th pick overall to my Atlanta Falcons. I'm not a huge fan of Rice as a player. I'm I'm really just not. I think he's kind of like a one-trick pony that has great body control and like hand control and makes great catches on the sidelines. But I think that's pretty much what his role is limited to. So he doesn't really have a fantasy upside. And I think like if you're taking deep shots down the field to a guy who can go up and get a ball and have great body control, probably going to be Drake London in this Atlanta offense or Kyle Pitts. So Rashi Rice is kind of a weird fit for me there, but his capital is just so much higher than anyone left available to draft. So I took him there at the 210. Not going to love it, but it is what it be. At 211, we dipped back into the running back pool. Devon A. Chain went in the third round, 65th overall to the Houston Texans. I think that is a really, really interesting duo between him and Damian Pierce. I think they could work off of each other. Very, very different play styles. I think each of them will have a very defined role in that offense. And it's just an exciting offense, right? You you draft uh, Bryce Young at quarterback. You know, you add some pieces, you add a wide receiver, you add a running back, and now you're starting to get your offensive skill group going. And I, I think this probably caps his upside from a fantasy perspective because he's paired with, paired with Damian Pierce. He won't get goal line work. He won't get a ton of early down work. But I like uh, Devon A. Chain enough, and I think the capital is pretty sexy here. So I'll take him at the 211. Now, Michael Wilson, this kid from Stanford, goes to another Cardinal, the Arizona Cardinals, in the third round. So he gets good draft capital. He gets day two draft capital, 96 pick overall. Michael Wilson is a great route runner, a really, really good route runner. Experience, he has not played a lot of games because he's been chronically injured, but when he is running routes, they are wonderful. And he's big, and he's got the size, and he's I think he ran a 4.53 at the 40, so his combine was good at, I think, 210 pounds. Um, this dude is one of the most underrated wide receivers in this draft class for sure. I remember watching the first game with Michael Wilson. Again, he's going to be on this list of, like, underrated wide receivers that I love in this class. I remember watching him. The first game was against like not some like highly ranked team and he was just eating up th these cornerbacks. He would every slant move he fucking had 2 to 3 yards of separation every time he wanted to run downfield, the guys couldn't keep up to him. He was dominating this team. And then they play against Oregon, and I'm like, damn, he's having a little bit of trouble se trouble separating. Like, he's really quick off the line of scrimmage, but the cornerback, I was like, man, this cornerback is fucking phenomenal. Like, his hips are so fluid, and I was like, I kind of want to look up who this cornerback is. Um, turns out to be Christian Gonzalez, who is probably the CB1 in this class, and is going to go like top six or eight picks in the NFL draft. I was like, okay, that makes a lot more sense. Uh, they had a great battle in, in the Stanford versus Oregon game. If you want to see, like, one— Christian Gonzalez and just how fluid his fucking hips are and Michael Wilson competing against a guy that's about to be a top six, eight cornerback. Go watch the Oregon versus Stanford film. It is awesome. Really, 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 uh, really fun watch. Statistically, Michael Wilson didn't have a big game. I think he went like four for 26 or something like that. But there are plenty of times off the line of scrimmage where Michael Wilson straight up just beats Gonzalez. And I'm like, that's what I was looking to see. Just because the Stanford quarterback, Tanner McKee, wasn't looking at Wilson during those plays, that's fine. I just want to see that he was able to separate and he was able to beat Christian Gonzalez. And there were plenty of times when Gonzalez beat him, but there was plenty of times when Wilson actually beat Gonzalez. And that's, you know, that's more than you could ask for for a dude of that talent level. Dipping into the third round, I took Sam Laporta, who was the only third round tight end. He goes to the Cincinnati Bengals, who desperately are going to need a tight end with Hayden Hurst out of the way. And I think Sam Laporta, kind of a little bit like like Hayden Hurst, where he's athletic, he could play on all three downs, great contested catch guy, can make plays after the catch. So Sam Laporta actually really, really coming out of Iowa, you know, fucking tight end you over there. Laporta ran a 4-5-9, 40-yard dash at the combine. Laporta is one of the most underrated tight ends in this draft class for sure. So go check out Sam Laporta. Love the landing spot for Cincy. Third round draft capital, Mwah. pristine. I went Parker Washington. He is a slot wide receiver out of Penn State. Built pretty well. I think he's like 5'11", 205. So he's kind of built like a running back. Uh, I compare him to like a Debo Samuel type. And then he came out and said like he styles his game after Debo. Not an outside separator, but he's going to play slot. And he's a guy that's phenomenal. Yak, phenomenal with the ball in his hands. He's like top 12 in terms of uh, yards after contact or yards after catch per reception. Missed tackles force per reception. Uh, just a playmaker with the ball in his hands. And he goes to Tennessee where they just got rid of Robert Woods. So makes sense for a landing spot with Parker Washington. Luke Musgrave is a second round pick. He goes to Buffalo 59th overall. I took him at the 3-3. He is like my least favorite hyped up tight end in this class. I think he is like Mike Kosicki reincarnated where he's just kind of like an athlete. He's going to look great in practice. He's going to look great in gym shorts. He could run really fast. He could jump really high. I just don't think he's that great of a football player. But if he's going to the Buffalo Bills in the second round, also, like behind Dawson Knox, so uh, landing spot's actually not great, but I think the capital probably deserves to get some capital in your rookie draft. After this, we have a run of running backs. There weren't a lot of third-round running backs. We had A-Chain and Tajay Spears go in the third round of this mock draft. Fourth round is just filled. This is where the fantasy in, in, in Cody's creeping out. He could not hold it for long. 
He could not wrap it up and tie it away. He said, fuck it. I've been, it's been exploding with all these running backs that I want to draft. Let me draft like 10 of them in the fourth round. And you see Roshan Johnson go off the board. You see Tank Bigsby, Zach Evans, Chase Brown, Kendra Miller, Eric Gray, Israel Abanaconda, Evan Hull, Deuce Vaughn. So I actually don't think that's really unrealistic. Fourth round, fifth round is where you're going to see so many of these running backs go off the board. Um, so I was trying to mix and match like, you know, the, once you get into the fourth round, once you get into day three, it's kind of all the capitals kind of similar. It's all shitty capital, right? It's all an uphill battle to have a real role on your NFL team. But, you know, you go for landing spot, you go for a spot where like there might be some play opportunity right off the rip. And uh, and then you also just get your guy. And y'all know I love Kendra Miller. He goes to Minnesota where Dalvin Cook and Alexander Madison are both free agents right now. So one, maybe both of them are gone. That would leave a decent amount of work for a dude like Kendra Miller, or at least the opportunity to win that work. And he's my favorite running back talent out of all these guys by far. So I took him at the 3-4. Roshan Johnson going to Arizona. He could be like the James Conner uh, incumbent. So he had the best capital out of everybody here. Also just a good all-around player for the most part. I think they're definitely going to have to pair him with another like exciting, explosive running back in that backfield. I took Chase Brown at the 3-6. I just realized I didn't even see that he was a Patriot. I thought he landed somewhere else. But Chase Brown had a great combine. He's got the size. He's got the speed. He's got the athleticism. He's got the college production. Patriots, not a great landing spot. They took a bunch of running backs last year. Pierre Strong, Kevin Harris. They obviously have Ramondre Stevenson operating as a three down back. I think I would probably, if I redid this, move Chase Brown to the 3-8, move Zach Evans up to the 3-7. Zach Evans got picked by the Saints in the fourth round, 115th overall. You look at the Saints' offense, and I think they're probably going to be underrated with an actual quarterback operating under center for them in Derek Carr. Then you ask yourself, you know, uh, Alvin Kamara, is he suspended for four games, six games, eight games, the entire fucking year? Who knows? Something's going to happen with the suspension. I think this summer they're going to court for it. Um, so that might leave, you know, complete open competition for the starting running back job. And Zach Evans could, you know, the upside of Zach Evans could win that role. Now, Izzy, Izzy down here. Noah did a full video breakdown on Izzy earlier this weekend. I think he did it on Saturday. It's up on the channel if you want to go watch that. But he lands in Buffalo. Is right for opportunity at the running back position. I think Devin Singletary is a free agent, so who knows what they do there. But if they don't address the position and the first thing they do is grab Izzy in the fourth round, I think that could be a really interesting uh, opportunity grab for him. So I grabbed him at the 3-8. Uh, and then we dipped back into the wide receivers that were available in the third and fourth round. So I don't really care once we get into the third round wide receiver range. I'm okay taking third, fourth round running backs over those guys, especially if I don't love them as a talent. So we have Jaden Reed, Nat Dell, Marvin Mims. Those three dudes are like small, undersized, speedy wide receivers. Now I ranked them this way because I think Jaden Reed is the best like pure wide receiver out of these three guys. I think Michigan State guy. He has legit long speed. 5'11", 191. Wow, best comp. Stefan Diggs, have a day. 4'4", 40 yard dash. He's a hands catcher. He's fast. He's quick. He's twitchy. He was great at the Senior Bowl, apparently. Just very good with the ball in the air. Uh, ball skills are just up there. He was a very good return man, too. Returned three punts for touchdowns at his time in college. Accounted for 33% of his team's receiving offense at age 18 when he was when he was just a true freshman. He did play his freshman year at Western Michigan before transferring to Michigan State. 98th percentile breakout age. He did line up in the slot on less than 20% of his passes over the last two seasons, which is kind of surprising. But uh, 5'11", 191, like you could definitely play on the outside. So... Uh, the more I look at and the more I break down Jaden Reed's tape and like his numbers and stuff, the more I like this kid. So maybe I need to move him up a little bit, especially if he gets this kind of draft capital going to Seattle. He could be like a, the next Tyler Lockett there. He could be, you know, filling that role forehand and hooker when he takes over after Geno Smith. So Jaden Reed, Nat Dell, uh, really exciting. You know, if I'm a, I'm a Falcons fan, he goes to the Falcons in the third round. He's very undersized. He's like 165 pounds and he didn't run as fast as he was supposed to. So he's He's not slow by any means, but like relative for his size, you got to either be fast or bigger. He's really small, but he's a really exciting player. So hopefully we find a role for him there. That was more of like a homer pick. Marvin Mims goes to the Packers. That's, you know, that's probably the best opportunity here in like a decent offense. I just don't love Marvin Mims as a talent. He's fast. He can definitely make plays downfield, but I think that's kind of all he is. And we have Jonathan Mingo, who also goes in the third round, goes to another spot with a lot of opportunity in New York. They need some wide receivers out there. Jonathan Mingo was a big winner at the Combine as well. He's a he's a absolute monster. Wide receiver out of Old Miss, 89th overall, 6'1", 226, 
four four six forty yard dash wide receiver position second best athleticism score nineteenth all time rank athleticism as per player profiler holy shit balls all right well they have all their comps up which is cool I'm gonna I'm gonna fuck around on here for a little bit Dalton Keene oh boy hate to see that Michael Mayer Zach Ertz interesting. That makes sense. I think they do have similar play styles. Here's the final board from the three-round mock draft based on Cody's mock draft, which, again, I will link down below. If you want to go check it out afterwards, you can see the entire ish board. Next Monday, we will be back bringing on guests to do mock drafts. We already have the next three weeks, I think, lined up. Next Monday will be J.J. Zacharyson coming on for a rookie mock. Uh, make sure you join our Discord because we will be posting the link to the mock draft if you want to draft with me and J.J. in there. So Discord, BG Discord, two Mondays from now. I'll have Mason from the Fantasy Flock on three Mondays from now. Either Nate Liss or Cody, actually, who did the mock draft. Cody and Matt Kelly from Player Profiler. But we got a really, really good list and lineup of dudes that are going to come on and mock draft with us. So we'll be doing this every single Monday. Thank you for hanging out. Free agency recap on Friday, hopefully, depending on everything that happens. I love you. Hit the button. Looks like this. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're fucking out of here. <laughs>